speaker has turned lecture on, and your line will remain muted until the conference leader unmutes your line. Hello? One, two, three. One, two, three. Dr. Summer, Dr. Short, I don't think this is on. Dr. Summer, Dr. Short, please, front row. Number one NICU right here. Your leaders. I don't know. I, I'm not in charge. You're a leader. You're a role model. What happened to our music? We used to have music. <laughs> Doctor, uh, the, the neurosurgeons, the neurosurgeons, I have two seats right here, please. Both of you, come on down. You want me to come there and walk you down? I'll, I'll do it. Well, thank you. Yep. <laughs> You're a leader, man. You're a leader. What? Lead. Lead. <laughs> thank you. One for you. Where's Dr. Keating? We'll have one right here. Keating yeah. to the OR. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Good place yeah. for him. Okay. Dr. Macero, maybe? He's, he's out of <laughs> Don't leave. See you later. Oh, Dr. Jacobson, we have a seat right here for you. In front of these guys? Yeah. You're a leader. You can't do that. You're a leader. <laughs> Sir. Where, where, where? All right, good morning. Good morning, happy high census. Um, so definitely I know people are working or be coming in. Um, so definitely if you can move close in and toward the middle so as other people come, they can sit because you don't want to be called out. Um, so for those that may not know me, I'm Dr. Karen Smith. I'm Chief um, Division of Hospital Medicine and President of the Medical Staff. Um, and I want to welcome you to the annual Good to Great Grand Rounds, um, led by our CEO, Dr. Kurt Newman. The title for today's presentation is Good to Great from the Physician's Perspective. If you remember about a year ago, we had Good to Great from the Patient Perspective. Last year, about 60% of our providers filled out the Physician Engagement Survey and results were released this past fall. And many of you have seen them. Um, this past weekend, I actually had the pleasure of attending the Women in Medicine Leadership Conference at Harvard University, and um, one of the keynote speakers actually presented the physician engagement um, data from Massachusetts General. And guess what? It was a lot like ours. They actually even measured a burnout rate, which was 40% of their medical staff, um, which I thought was fairly impressive. While our survey didn't measure burnout, physician engagement burnout is a nationwide concern, as many of you know. However, what we have to our advantage here at Children's is a physician CEO who's been here with Children's National for 30 years. And he's a physician that listens, a leader that listens. He has um, spent time with myself and other members of the medical staff hearing our concerns and coming together to seek solutions for improvement. It is my pleasure that he has decided to dedicate, dedicate this grand round um, to physician engagement um, and hear from you your concerns and present his ideas. So for this grand round, please welcome our CEO, Dr. Kurt Newman. Well, thank you all. And uh, as Karen was talking, I, I realized uh, that uh, the title of this talk is, is all wrong. Because for this group, I actually think it's great to even greater. I think you guys are just terrific. 
And uh, I think that's what is uh, what I love about uh, being a leader here at Children's National. Uh, Karen mentioned, uh, and I, I, you know, get a little emotional about this, but I've been here 33 years, and uh, I've never ever wanted to be anywhere else. So I'm thrilled to be here with you and to talk about where we are, how we can get better, how I can help us get better, how you can help me get better. Because uh, that's, uh, I think in a way, that's what medicine's all about. Uh, just trying to learn, uh, educate yourself, help others, and it's, uh, it's just an honor to be part of an organization that has those kind of values and, uh, and the kind of doctors, nurses, uh, teams that we have. Because you're really the backbone. Uh, you're the backbone of all we do. Uh, you're the backbone of our innovation. Scott, I got a uh, seat right for you right here. I'm going to give you my seat because I'm going to uh, mention you in my talk. Uh, and that's one of the great things. I know uh, I, I know you guys, you know, and I know he was probably just seeing a few more extra patients because that's what he does. Believe me, that's what he does. And all of you do things like that. And it's unsung, the hard work, the care you're given, the teaching, the research. It's unsung. You're not doing it for credit or notice. You're doing it because you care, and that's what you want to do. You want to leave. You want to leave children's. You want to leave our uh, community. You want to leave our nation. Oh, Tanya Kinlow, head of government and community affairs. Uh, there's a seat right here on the front row for you. Uh, and I know you were just probably talking to the new governor of Virginia. Yeah. And might I add, he gave grand rounds here last year and a pediatric neurologist rotated at Children's National, served not only on the neurology service, but the neurosurgeons put him on the neurosurgery service because they were a little short at that time. <laughs> I know that never happens, right? But uh, you guys are, uh, you know, you're just the, the leaders uh, uh, for all we're doing and the great, uh, and I know you don't do it for recognition, but we got some great recognition this year. And, uh, Well, I was going to talk about IT. <laughs> Dr. Jacobs, Brian, can you come up here? <laughs> Maybe it needs a battery or something. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to keep it. Yeah. Somebody, somebody just said, call the help desk. <laughs> Mm, lock up. Okay, well, what, if you could see the slide, what it would show you is that uh, we were uh, top 10 U.S. News World Report. Uh, we were magnet, our nurses and our culture around that. Uh, we were leapfrog, which is all about safety. And we were number one and for our neonatology service in the U.S. News and World Report. And uh, where's Dr. Short? Dr. Short, can you? Yeah. Is, it, is anybody else in your team? Yeah. But, you know, it's not just, it, it, she'd be the first to say this isn't about the NICU, actually. It's really about the entire Children's National. Our nurses, our doctors, uh, everything that we're doing uh, is, uh, part of that. It's not just one uh, service, although they get, get the credit, but, you know, it's genetics, it's uh, surgery, it's anesthesiology, it's uh, the social work, it's uh, uh, child life, 
Uh, it's all of that. So if you were then to see what was on the second slide, let me uh, get over here. Boy, this is really embarrassing. Uh, oh, okay, there, there you go. So Top Children's Hospital, we got that recognition. Uh, Okay, um, and uh, you would have, um, and, and so we're just proud of these recognitions. But at the heart of that, it's, it's how we're caring for patients. Uh, it's the, uh, you know, it's just the excellent care every day. And, uh, well, there's Brian Stone, another member of the team. I didn't even see him uh, there uh, sitting quietly. So uh, let's just look at how hard you're working. And just the success Children's has had. So this is a slide that shows our market share for our primary service area, the, uh, um, the district, Maryland, and Virginia. And just look what we've done in the last four years, a 7% growth in our market share means that we're becoming more and more dominant in our, in our home base. I mean, people are recognizing uh, how strong we are and how good we are and how good the care is. Uh, that means you're taking patients from somebody else because you're doing so well. Uh, you all are feeling this part of it, our growth. Uh, this on the left side is the outpatient visits. Look at that, um, uh, 120,000 visit growth in four years. It's just huge and there's a lot of people in the room that have you know, really thought about how to see, uh, uh, be more efficient and uh, spread and see more, uh, see, see more children. The, the one on the right it has to do with our inpatient volume. And again, they're growing. And I know you're all feeling it uh, right now. I think, I don't know what it is today, 310 patients in the hospital. Several, uh, I think yesterday there were 100 patients in the emergency department. Lots of patients waiting for ICU beds. Uh, we hadn't really projected this kind of growth. That's not what most children's hospitals in the country are experiencing. This is your strategies, your hard work, your excellence. People are recognizing Children's National as a go-to place. Now, we got to catch up with that. And I know that uh, uh, there's a lot of plans and things, and it takes time. And I, I, I feel what's happening. I know you're feeling. Uh, that does translate into financial strength. I'll just look uh, over the last four years uh, how we've grown our revenue. This isn't our uh, expenses or our our margins, but it's it's tied into that. But just look at look at that growth. That gives us the resources to do uh, more things, and we're trying to also recognize. Uh, the people that are doing the hard work. This year we paid out, the, uh, I think, the highest uh, incentives uh, that we've ever um, done for the uh, uh, faculty, the frontline staff, because we wanted to recognize that we're, we were able to uh, provide those kinds of resources. And at the same time, held health insurance costs flat. That's not what you're reading in the paper about what most uh, people experiencing. And uh, we've gone, uh, a lot of you have uh, been excited to be participating in our transparency and getting things out there. And uh, this is uh, uh, Suresh, who I put here on the front row. He didn't know why I was putting him on the front row. Uh, but he participated in uh, uh, this and, and it, it, you know, uh, this is opportunity is open to a lot of you. Uh, to educate consumers about, and we're trying to change up and look at our consumers, uh, our patients, our families a little differently, but we're trying to highlight how important your work is. And so uh, uh, he went on and said some things about himself, and then on Facebook and other things, people started replying. And uh, you, the things that people said about him were just, Incredible, and there's there's uh, dozens of you have uh, do this, but there was one that Jennifer says, Doctor, uh, help me, Maggie, 
Dr. Maggie, saved my son's life six years ago and changed our family's history. We are forever grateful to him and children's. And uh, this one post, 760 people looked at it, 39 shared it, the 24 comments were amazing. The president did not retweet that one, though, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say. But if you have a Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram account, I encourage you to uh, uh, work with our team to get the word out. I wanted to recognize some of the, uh, just a, this is just a few of our leaders that have created strategic collaborations that are are paying off around the community. Brian Stone, many uh, neonatal and hospitalist contracts and uh, relationships with uh, hospitals ar around the, the region with Robin Steinhorn. Uh, Gil Rushton uh, has been a champion at the Inova uh, Pediatric Specialist of Virginia and also Kaiser Permanente, two of our most important uh, uh, health systems that we're working with to create urology partnerships. Joelle Simpson, Dr. Simpson, uh, the disaster planning uh, with the District of Columbia, and this has never been more, I mean, we've seen this just this year, all of the potential uh, disasters that are out there. So we wanted to, we want this readiness. And uh, she's been uh, uh, doing that, whether it's uh, hurricanes, oncologist has a joint appointment here and at Johns Hopkins uh, as we stand up the proton beam which is going to be an incredible uh, resource for children not only in Washington and Baltimore but across the country around the world and we're already uh, now being able to do radiation oncology uh, over at Sibley for our kids under our flag and Dr. Richard Jonas who has uh, worked so hard and been such a leader uh, to create a relationship with ANOVA around pediatric cardiac surgery. In the face of, you know, 20, 30, 40 years of stiff competition, they are now coming together with us to, to uh, uh, care for uh, heart surgery patients together under Richard's leadership. And then there's some unsung things that happen. I wanted to just mention uh, two doctors from last weekend. I got a phone call from a, 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 a a person that had a horrible rash, their, their child had a horrible rash. Uh, they sent a picture. I, I contacted Scott and didn't hear anything back. The reason I didn't hear anything back, he had the family drive over to his house to take a look at this thing. Who does that? I mean, that just shows the kind of care and uh, outreach and the, um, that he uh, uh, provided. And that uh, family is so grateful, but in particular, that uh, uh, that teenager is just incredibly grateful. Uh, Matt Ochin, same weekend, got a call. Uh, uh, somebody had, uh, I think they, uh, their child had fallen off. Uh, no, he was, uh, he was a goalie on a, a lacrosse game and hurt his shoulder. It was intense pain, uh, and they, uh, had been told to go to a, a pediatric, I mean, a, a regular emergency department. The mother had read my book. She said, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to a regular, I want a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. And I'm thinking to me in my head, well, you know, you might not get one on the weekend. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I called uh, Matt Ochin. He talked to the mother on the phone, set everything up, and uh, again. And these are just two of thousands, and I could have pulled uh, so, because I know this goes on, I know you guys do that in your communities and you're on the playgrounds. You're out there. You go in. The, you go into a store and say you're from Shoulders National, or you wear a coat that has that little thing on it. People get excited. They love seeing you because they there's so many uh, uh, things and that the, the, in so many ways that doctors in our hospital touch people. And let's not forget uh, our our research and. And academics, whether it's, you know, I think, I don't know what the, what do you call that value mark? The uh, uh, impact. impact value of, uh, but New York Times is pretty high. Uh, and Roberta was, was in there, Roberta DiBiase, uh Science and translational, I don't think you get higher than that in 
and research. Uh, but it, it, it on down. Uh, I love this one down here. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what these mothers are thinking when they read the, the, the question, is your placenta healthy? But Dr. Limperopoulos can help them with that. Uh, but we had, I think, uh, 1,100 articles authored by uh, Children's National in one year. Think about that. Doctors, nurses, people are writing. They're getting the word out. They're, they're helping uh, uh, advance things. We're, and you know all the statistics. We're number seven in NIH funding. Our grant award rate is uh, 38%. The national average is 25%. And one more recognition, uh, you know, it's not one that I, uh, you know, when I was on here, I thought it was pretty important. Now that I'm not on here anymore, I, you know. <laughs> but, but uh, and, and believe me, this stuff, uh, every single person in this room ought to be on that list, in my view. But there were, um, by uh, their peers in Washingtonian, I think over, uh, uh, 60 doctors, 60 of our doctors were recognized in 25 different specialties. Just think about that. Don't worry about who's on here and who's not. But just think about uh, the number of uh, uh, physicians, uh, physicians on there. And then uh, if you look down there in the, this is the cover of that magazine. Look down there in the bottom left corner, you might recognize Dr. Maceros, John Maceros, one of our neurosurgeons. You said he was somewhere? He's out of town seeing patients, I think. <laughs> but Dr. Keating, the chief, we had a big uh, uh, spread on him in there, and he's in the operating room. And uh, uh, I know uh, I know you guys are frustrated about the facilities, and I I can tell you I get frustrated too because we're growing so fast, and there's so many things to do, and everybody wants something. Uh, but we are making some progress. Uh, if anybody's here from the uh, uh, CPNA, uh, or uh, maybe you don't know where Fort Davis is, but that's in Ward 7, in, in, uh, over on the other side of the Anacostia River. Uh, that's a new clinic over there. I, I've been to the old clinic. It was not anything you'd ever want to take your child to. Beautiful. Howard County. This is the first for us. We moved up north into Howard County, and that's clinic is opening soon. It's open. Whoa. Has anybody started seeing patients in there yet? Anybody in the crowd? They're probably up there seeing patients right now. Uh, downtown Anacostia, again, we brought two clinics together. And uh, I, uh, I was told, and I believe it now, I've been over there a few times, that it was going to be too small once it opened. And that has turned out to be true. When you put good doctors in a good place, people uh, will come, and that, those uh, uh, physicians over there are just doing great. Annapolis just opened up a new uh, clinic, bigger. Uh, it's it's just incredible. That's one of the exam rooms there with that turtle. Do we do that because it's Maryland and Terrapin or something like that? Okay. And then uh, what else? We got the ARC. Uh, we're tripling the size there. When does that open up? Soon. January. Uh, Frederick, Maryland, I know that one's cl close, uh, and that's been needed for a long time. Uh, Friendship Heights, soon. We got a waiting on a permit, but it's it's beautiful. Is Dr. Sharma here? Uh, he's had a big hand in that one. Uh, Prince George's County, we're uh, uh, just filed for a certificate of need. That's going to be a big clinic, bringing up for Marlboro and uh, Laurel together uh, with some ambulatory operating rooms. Uh, Columbia Heights, uh, that's on the drawing board. And uh, here's a good one, uh, the Tacoma Theater. This is a new home for um, uh, 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 outpatient uh, uh, mental health, psychiatry, psychology, and a few other things. Uh, Oh, Dr. Packer, thank you. Child de development. It is a really, really cool space. And uh, I think we're about, what, six, eight months or so, a year, somewhere uh, for that. So a lot of uh, uh, things there. I know there's a lot to do on this campus, but we've got to do this stuff to make the space. And then there's our pediatric innovation campus at Walter Reed. 
and we're moving forward with the planning there. Uh, a lot of exciting plans. There are, uh, we're anticipating a primary care clinic there, a, uh, uh, a, a big parking lot is already there, 1,200 spaces. <laughs> How about that? Who's parked in that new parking lot over in uh, uh, Brooklyn? Anybody parking over there in the back? That place is beautiful. I want to just go over there and park, and, uh, but then I want to come over here. Uh, but a lot of a lot of good stuff, and then the research side of this, the innovation side. Dr. Summer, uh, I just want to call him out. He's had a huge role in uh, securing uh, the, the 12 acres of research space for us from the United States Army. And so we've got an architect, and these are some of the early plans for that for that building. And it's gonna be really, really cool, and it'll create some space here for us to grow on this campus as well. But I'm talking about all this great stuff, and you're probably thinking, well, we've heard all that before. Um, and that's true. So there is something going on, and uh, maybe I was a little blind to all the things going on in medicine as uh, in the physician world. And I think that's the risk of being in a job like I have, is that sometimes uh, if you stop listening or people start telling you what they think you want to hear or you're not out in the trenches as much, you get a little disconnected from what's, what's really going on. I started hearing some things. Uh, believe me, you've got great leaders, uh, and they're not shy about telling me what's going on. And but I was, you know, focused on all this other stuff. But then it became a little bit more, uh, more real. Partly because I started feeling it myself. I started feeling the stress and the, just the uh, just the constant pressure of trying to do more, maybe not taking care of ourselves as much. And then I started reading it because, uh, and, you know, I think a lot of things are put under the uh, framework of physician burnout, but there, there's something going on that's that's bigger than Children's National. I just felt like there's something going along. And I don't, I want to be sure that we're not uh, uh, just so focused on uh, physician burnout because I believe that this is probably true of all health professions. And we could probably talk about nurse burnout or social work burnout or anybody on the team. I think we're all feeling it in different ways, but we chose to use this forum today to talk about physician physician burnout. And there's uh, this was an article, and I think one of the things that uh, was um, uh, no, notable to me was that the, uh, the 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 group of CEOs here these are fierce competitors on just about everything. The CEO of the Mayo Clinic, of Johns Hopkins, of uh, the Cleveland Clinic. Of uh, Mass General, they big, big organizations, and they're the ones talking about it being a public health crisis, and they're call, it's almost a call to arms that they want people to recognize this because uh, it has such an impact. And then the, you know it's it's permeated into the Harvard Business Review. Uh, how you can make? Who would have ever thought that you'd have an article? like this with quilts and hearts and everything in the Harvard Business Review. But it's a, uh, people are paying attention and trying to come up with strategies and trying to get to the root uh, of what's wrong. Uh, Dr. Cora Bramble has been a real, um, has been passionate about this along with Dr. Russell and others. And she asked me if she could attend something called the American Conference on Physician Health, which was held earlier this fall, where she heard about the Mayo Clinic's approach to this and how they had created an organizational strategy. So the details aren't important here. I think what's important is that the, 
that this came from the top, from the CEO, John uh, Noseworthy, who's a physician, and looked at what are the drivers that cause us the workload and job demand. But at the heart of it, people wanted meaning in their work. But there are all these other things. And if they were less optimal, you saw the signs of burnout, exhaustion, cynicism, inefficiency. If you move toward more optimal, people had vigor and dedication and absorption. And there's, I think it's a great uh, framework for thinking because there's hope. And I think we're lucky we have something so precious and at the heart of things, which is the meaning in our work, taking care of kids. You know, that really is what, what uh, drop, is what brings us all together. We just need to tap back into that and be conscious about these other things and find ways of moving to the right-hand side, to the more optimal uh, uh, side. Uh, just some uh, statistics. Look at the, the magnitudes. I mean, this is the kind of thing that was getting my attention. The overall burnout rate was 51%, much higher in uh, females than males. And the leading causes, I mean, it's no surprise, too many bureaucratic tasks, spending too many hours at work, being like just a, a cog uh, in the wheel. Does that resonate? Does that feel like uh, some of the things that uh, um, you all are feeling? So uh, at that uh, conference, it was interesting uh, Stanford, Stanford Medicine has appointed uh, a chief wellness officer, Tate Shanafield. And he uh, had a quote, uh, and this was brought back to me. My experience has shown that an individual organization that is committed to this at the highest level of leadership and that invests in well-designed interventions can move the needle and run counter to the national trend of physician distress and burnout. So I've talked to Karen Smith about this, talked to our, our leaders. So there, that's why I say there's hope if we really uh, address this in a positive way. Now, Karen mentioned the, the uh, uh, survey, and I, I want to just go through it for a minute because I, I, you know, I've spent some time with this now. So this is a survey of our own uh, our team. It's, it's you all. And it was done by the advisory board, and I think it was done last year, last year. And uh, we had 566 total positions that were eligible to take this. And we got 354, this was anonymous. Uh, that's a hu actually a huge response. Actually, that also shows a lot of engagement, just that fact that 64% of physicians uh, took this survey. Because you know that most of the time when you get those things, you're firing it off somewhere. Some of you already have filters and it goes straight to junk mail already. So to get through all that and then do it, uh, I think at a 64% rate, the CRI uh, uh, folks were at uh, 50%. And uh, uh, so I'm I'm thrilled that we got that kind of response because then it's then you start having getting meaningful data. So this is a little complicated, but uh, this is a, an engagement score that comes out of all the answers, and it gets uh, uh, classified whether you're uh, an organ whether somebody is disengaged, ambivalent, content, or engaged. And our uh, our scores are the bar, the red bar the bar graph. So we didn't have too many uh, that were disengaged, seven, eight percent. That's about where most other organizations are. But look what happens. We have a lot of people, much higher than the, the, the median, uh, that were, are ambivalent. Almost like they're showing up for work and, you know, uh, we were uh, we were a little above the median for people that were content, 
So almost half of the people were content. So you could say, well, that's not too bad. You got 70% of your people that are ambivalent or content. But is that where we want to be? I don't think so. I'd like to be way over there on the engaged side. And look at where we sit compared to the engaged, to the top organizations probably. We're 21% engaged. And uh, so I hope when we do this again in a year or two because of the strategies that, and the uh, approaches that we can move more people that are feeling just content or a little ambivalent over into the engage that. I think this ought to be a wake-up call for our leaders. You know, we need to, we've got work to do. So uh, here's uh, kind of diving into the data a little more. Uh, so these were some of the questions. And then uh, A and SA means uh, agree or strongly agree. So those are put together. So that first column would say, I'm interested in position leadership opportunities at this organization. 56% of you said, yeah, I'd really like to get engaged on a leadership way. That's higher than the average. So that's good. The average was, I think, of our peers, peers, children's hospital peers, maybe, uh, were uh, at 47. I would recommend this organization to a friend or relative to receive care. 80% of you said you would. I don't know where the other 20% would, would send them. I don't want to know. But uh, uh, This organization provides excellent clinical care to patients, 80%, again, just above the uh, median. And uh, this is a good one. I have good working relationships with the clinicians in my principal practice area. So people are happy with who they're practicing with and who their group is and how things work uh, in their group. Now, we asked, where are the opportunities? What's making people uh, unhappy? I received the operational and business support services, IT, billing, coding, scheduling, to succeed in my practice. Only 20% thought that we were doing uh, would agree or strongly agree with that. And that was way below the median, 35%. So, you know, I'm not a, I'm not great on statistics, but that looks significant. This organization is pursuing an effective EMR, EHR strategy. Only 20% of you would strongly agree with that. And my compensation and benefits are competitive with what I could receive elsewhere for a comparable role. Only 20% of people thought that. This doesn't necessarily mean it's true or not, but that's what people are feeling. So we've got work to do in those areas. So last year, as uh, Karen mentioned, we talked about good to great and embracing the parent's perspective. And I was so pleased by Oh, hi, Dr. Sharma. I already called you out. You missed my great accolades. And as I said before, we want to go from great to even greater by embracing the physician's perspective. Does everybody know Dr. Long, Sahira Long, one of our true champions? She's probably over at the uh, Anacostia Clinic trying to see more patients over there. Uh, so this was the, uh, at the Stanford Wellness uh, uh, Physician Conference. And who went to that? There were a uh, couple people that uh, uh, went to that. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Dr. Cora Bramble was there. And then, again, these are some strategies that they advised that we want to take a look at because we're, we're going to uh, – I know it sounds like a real CEO move, but we're going to have a task force. No. But uh, this task force uh, and, um, and Dr. Uh, Karen Smith has already moved ahead with this. There's an executive uh, committee from the medical executive uh, that she is appointed. And uh, Dr. Corvo, Christy Corvo, is Christy here? She might be up in the ICU. Dr. Sharma is a big part of this. I'm glad uh, uh, because we want to understand uh, you know, where we are and what some of these strat strategies that we can employ uh, to bring this forward. Now, I just want to 
uh, end. So I don't have magic bullets. I mean, a lot of the things, uh, those areas, I've talked a lot uh, with Brian. Uh, we've been trying to move so fast in so many ways to bring our IT systems and the technology to up. And sometimes things can get a little out of balance or behind. So we, we hear that and we need to do more. As we bring these new clinics, I know we've studied the workflows and the, the, uh, the support that's, that's needed. And I think uh, we're gonna be, uh, get stronger and stronger on that. And we're looking at the compensation and the benefits and we made some major moves in areas where things just weren't fair. And we wanna keep, keep doing that. So we're listening, I'm listening, but there's so much more to do. But I think on a, a little positive note, and then I wanna leave some, uh, the rest of the time for uh, questions and discussion, is, um, you know, despite all this, and we're not alone, I mean, this is, uh, as Karen mentioned, those statistics were similar to the, the Mass General. And probably in every hospital uh, uh, in the country. I think what's great about children is we're, we're the right size and we've got the right people uh, to get something done. So when we go back to what the physician wellness officer at Stanford said, we can, we can be a, a leader in this area. And then I think that'll translate even to even better care for our patients, more research, you know, and all of that. And I think we also um, need to take care of ourselves. Personally, I realized I was out of balance. And, uh, and I needed to look at my, uh, my own personal wellness. And, uh, you know, I had to change some things, exercise, meditation. I was joking this morning, but this morning I took my first yoga class ever. <laughs> it's true. And I feel great. <laughs> but we need to, uh, we need more of that. And uh, we need to find ways of helping people do that. But on an optimistic note, and uh, were any residents able to get here from Browns? I know it's been intense and you've been getting all these messages to spend more time discharging patients and all of that. And I, uh, I know uh, how difficult uh, that must be being a, a resident here right now. It's so, so busy, but I'm just thrilled by the engagement uh, of our, our residents students. Uh, is Mary O'Lean oh, here? There she is. So she, Mary, uh, has taken, you may not even know this, but a leadership role in training our residents uh, in new ways. We got a grant. We're the only children's hospital in the country. Only pediatric. There's eight. Um, institutions that got one of these grants to look at what education should look like in the future and interprofessional training and working, working as teams. And it's just been empowering to think about the future. We're going to be a leader. And um, uh, she has, um, you know, been just championing that because the education in the future and us being role models for that future is so important. So I'm really excited about what we're gonna learn and find out uh, from that. And I appreciate your leadership and look how it translates that kind of passion, commitment. Uh, Dr. Teach, Dr. Agrawal, uh, Dr. Odolini. So this is the first year class of our residents that, that came here. And um, they're excited. They are the cream of the crop. Almost 60% of U.S. seniors in medical schools are applying 
to come to Children's National because they've heard what great things. They've heard about the uh, faculty. They've heard about our passion and, and our, 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 our students. And I just put this up there because, in a way, uh, they're the future. We want them to go into medicine launched with the sense that you can care, you can do all this, and you're not going to burn out. You're going to have an impact. You're going to have a great life, and you're going to be able to take care of a lot of kids or do terrific research or teach other residents. And that's what we want Children's National uh, to be. And I'd like to start that process right here today. I want all of you to be a part of it because that's how we can get, get strong, help our kids get stronger, and really uh, succeed and have fun in what we do. So thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure. I'm going to put up a slide just to sit here, just as a background so there's something up there because uh, I think it was one of the coolest things we did for our patients, but it signifies also this is our healing garden. I've seen a lot of you out there using it for your own healing, but that's just kind of the sense uh, that we want uh, to create about what we do. So, open for questions, have at it, wait for a microphone to come to you, So, because I believe we have a lot of people on the phone, but thank you very much for your... <laughs> You know, feel your diaphragms moving. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> Dr. Silver. Thank hold, you. hold, hold on. Thank you very much. We we need this. Uh, I want to use the opportunity since we have such a big crowd to remind everybody of the. Um, pediatric ethics program sponsoring the Schwartz Center Rounds for Compassionate Care, and it's for compassion for each one of us. Uh, the people that have come to those have really had a great experience because that's where we discuss some of our own experiences with difficulties and support each other. So be tuned to the announcement of the next Schwartz Center Round. So the Schwartz Center Rounds is a place you can come and uh, discuss things and look at the impact, not only on the patients and the families, but on the, on the caregivers and our teams, and maybe the community. It's a great, great innovation, highly recommended. Got Dr. Sharma over here. <clears throat> Does everybody know, uh, Dr. Uh, first of all, Dr. Silber, I should have introduced. Uh, long, how many years have you been here? Two more than you. <laughs> Two more than me. 35, and uh, has uh, just been a, a, a force of nature in terms of adolescent medicine, uh, ethics, eating disorders. Thank you. And Dr. Sharma, uh, Division Chief for Allergy and Immunology. Uh, well, first, Dr. Newman, I just want to thank you for doing this uh, on behalf of all of the medical staff because this is something that we've been talking about uh, for months uh, after the results of the engagement survey came out. Um, for those that are more interested in contributing to provider wellness, uh, Christy Korovo and I are on this provider wellness committee through medical staff, and we've met a few times already and plan to start going to each of the divisions to do what I call honest, ugly truth, uh, because a topic again, honest, ugly truth. Honest, ugly truth. And this is something that my coach actually um, helped us do within our division. And with a topic like this, there's a lot that'll come out that we're frustrated by, um, that we're 
upset about that just needs to come out because that will allow us then to harness the energy towards solutions. Um, and so we want others to join us in this work. Um, and so if you feel passionately about provider wellness, um, addressing burnout, organizational change towards that, please contact me or Christy because we really want to make this an institution-wide initiative. Um, within our own group, we're piloting an, an initiative in the next few months, uh, looking at meditation uh, to address provider burnout at the individual level. Um, but obviously, this is not just an individual level issue. There's organizational level and you know div division level uh, changes that need to be made as well. But I really just thank you, Dr. Newman, for for doing this because I agree with you. I think we can be the leader in this area among children's hospitals. And the current state of engagement is a huge opportunity uh, for us to improve and really lead. Thank you uh, uh, for that. Uh, I, I don't really want to take any credit. When I saw those results, uh, I think I went into denial and tried, like most doctors, to you know, challenge the statistics. Well, the survey must be wrong. They didn't ask the questions the right way. It's not statistical and all of that. What are those stages of grieving? Uh, anger, I got angry. And what's after that? Bargaining, yeah. I tried to work some things out with Denise and David and Mark. And, and then acceptance, is that? Oh, depression. Thank you, Dr. Sandler. <laughs> Isn't that great? Our chief of surgery is a psychiatrist. He died. <laughs> That's what the uh, But, uh, you know, it's uh, serious. And uh, I think that self-introspection and then uh, the harsh, ugly truth. Uh, but, you know, then you can move on and we can we can make make things better. We're not gonna be perfect, but we can certainly uh create the dialogue and the changes and and uh I think it, that'll go a long way. But we need to get some concrete results too. Got the chief financial officer here. He's right here. Alec King. We're gonna put some resources into this now. Yes sir. Can we get a microphone? Uh, I, I agree. Thank you again. Can you for, introduce yourself? So, Rich Bosco from uh, from. I don't speak for Tony. I don't speak for Gene. I have to say. So he's a uh, He was this. in the military a long time. He wants to make sure that everybody knows these are his own personal feelings. They're not organizational. They're not his chief. But if you know Dr. Bosco, uh, if you saw those, if you saw our OR numbers. I didn't show those, but they kind of gone on that same kind of a rise. That happens because of leadership. And uh, Dr. Heitmiller, Dr. Bosco, and that team, the nurses, uh, have, you know, really re-engineered things uh, for the patient experience as well as efficiency and quality and outcomes. And, you know, Dr. Sandler, you've just got a terrific team there. I left a lot of it for you, but you no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Surgeons has something to do with that too, I guess. But um, uh, one, one a disclaimer, uh, Brian Jacobs does more with a, with a bad hand than he was dealt um, with anybody else I've ever seen. So um, my hat's off to him. How much of the, the problems that you see with uh, HR, IT, came from a vision five years ago when we were talking about 2018 of a flat line or a decreased growth and our focus was on cost cutting and, and protecting margin as opposed to building up the infrastructure for a, a much bigger organization that we've, that we've turned into. And do we still have a mindset of we have to protect margins, we have to look for cost cutting rather than saying to make this sustainable, we need to invest in HR compensate or compensation or or revenue and things like that, to, which would also make the physicians' lives much easier. Wow! So 
uh, you know, that is at the crux of the uh, issue. And when um, when I came in as CEO, I think I, I told you all uh, that my vision was that we would put the patient and family at the top, at the center, because my and at the business of healthcare, we would reorient and reorganize to serve the patients and the families. That would be our priority. And it was my sense that at Children's and a lot of other organizations, it had actually somehow gotten off track and that all of the patient care and everything had been uh, organized to meet the business objectives. So it's taken a while, and, and I told people uh, that if we did that, that the finances would follow. You're right. I mean, things were flat. Uh, we weren't growing. Uh, there was a lot of concern about potential layoffs, about maybe having to, uh, you know, uh, look at uh, uh, not be independent anymore. I mean, those were serious questions at that time. But I think collectively we had this, this vision that if we did that, uh, good things would happen in the business. I had to build a team. Uh, we had to do this all at once. You mentioned the uh, IT structure that was present. It was terrible. We were what's called level one. There's seven levels. We weren't gonna get the big federal infrastructure grants. Now we're level six on the way to level seven and we just got an award uh, for being, you know, uh, one of the top, uh, what do you call it, the Davies Award. This is huge. And got all that funding. Now, you know, you have to, and, and then we're growing. And, and so it worked. We got two credit upgrades. Now we got some margin to work with. We can do these clinics. We can hire more doctors. We can, and we kept that patient and family focus at the top. Now, sometimes things get a little out of balance and out of whack. Maybe this is an area where now that we've got that kind of strength, we can do more. But we're not going to take our, our um, you know, laser vision off of, the, um, off of the patients and the families and the care being at the heart of it. And we can be smart about these resources that we're getting. So did we lay anybody off? Not really. Have we improved compensation? I would say we have. I've got, I can show you the numbers. Maybe individuals don't necessarily feel it, but we brought people up that some of the people were below the 25th percentile. Was there some unfairness about uh, women and minorities? Yes, there was. And we uh, brought people in, looked at it, and we're, we're correcting that because uh, that had been a long-standing issue uh, uh, in the faculty in particular. Uh, was some of the infrastructure in poor shape? Those elevators that you go up and down in, and the, they hadn't ever been, there hadn't been a fire inspection in some of these things. So we had all this stuff that you don't see to do at the same time. But we kept uh, that focus, and I think what's beautiful is because of the great work that you all have done and you stuck with it, you see the results that are coming. Nobody thought we'd be top 10 in five years from where we were. Nobody thought we'd have a number one uh, service or that, uh, you know, orthopedics would, you know, go get up into the top 10 or, I mean, you, you can just name over and over again or that we grow our research the way it has or we'd get uh, something like Walter Reed and have what I hope is the first pediatric um, innovation and research center in the, in the campus in the country. And these are big ideas and, you know, we're trying to do as much as we can. But I think we got a little bit out of balance here and it's, you know, coming uh, and, and people are feeling it. Maybe we have grown so fast, we just haven't kept up. But what's the alternative?
So I don't know if that completely answers your question, but we're, uh, the goal is to, to continue to grow, invest. I think that the talent is at the heart of it all, our doctors, nurses. We've got to get the best people. We've got to make them uh, provide the opportunities that they want. I look at the recruitments that we've got. New chief of nephrology from the NIH, is she here? There, there's one of my uh, 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 great colleagues or a new chief of sickle cell. Uh, is, uh, I'm sure, I don't wanna call people out if they're not here. But uh, uh, there's a new uh, head of uh, the um, cardiac ICU coming. Uh, we got a new head of the pediatric ICU. We're getting the top people that we want. Uh, I think that's also an important thing. Uh, we've changed our whole research uh, leadership or half the research leadership and replaced Eric Hoffman with, you know, we've got Eric Belaine, top people. Um, so all of these are, are happening. So it's, sometimes it's easy to get distracted. I didn't want to get into all the, the great stuff, but yes, I, I think we're going to continue to grow, get stronger, uh, and we got to reinvest more in our talent. I'm told I'm, it's nine o'clock. I can keep going. <laughs> I know you've got a lot of work to do. Uh, my office, the door's open. You know, you got an idea, come in and chat. Otherwise, um, uh, Dr. Corvo, Dr. Sharma are going to create the infrastructure here. Talk to your chiefs. Uh, if you got a good idea about IT, talk to Brian. We got the Bear Institute. You know, we're looking for innovation. Thank you all for all the great work you did. <laughs>